the lost secrets of the ancient Jewish sect called the Essenes, whose strange rituals told the secret of how man might communicate with God directly, as King Solomon had. For author and Freemason Christopher Knight, these Essene documents, written by the authors of the Dead Sea Scrolls, were the real treasure. When the mushroom is expanding and it reaches this table phase, uh, this is, I wanted to call your attention back to the picture of Krishna being crucified or Jesus being crucified. Uh, here we have the cross, the Tau cross, which is the origin of the cross that we see today. Uh, this, this deity here now has a crown of thorns on top and a sash and it is standing on one leg. So the, the Christ character or Krishna is standing with his arms up now with a crown and the sash around his waist. This picture is a, is, is a good picture to show the table face of the mushroom. Uh, the Knights of the Round Table uh, is a, progressed into the, the Knights Templar, the Keepers of the Holy Grail. And we're going to show how this mushroom is the Holy Grail, but the, the keepers of this mushroom would, would have been the Knights of this round table. And this is also a good picture to show that this mushroom appears to be burning coals with white ashes on top. The accepted history of the Freemasons links the secret society back to medieval stonemasons. But a deep tradition holds that the true roots of the society trace back to a 3,000 year old history tied to the legendary white knights of the Crusades, the Knights Templar. The structure that I see is that the rituals used by Freemasons today came from the Knights Templar. And the Knights Templar got them from uh, the priests of Jerusalem at the time of Christ. Like the Freemasons, the Knights Templar have been a source of fascination and mystery for centuries. As the Pope's special soldiers of Christ, they killed countless thousands of infidels, mostly Muslims, during the Crusades, and grew to great wealth and power in medieval Europe. But they began with a solitary group of nine Frenchmen, who traveled to the Holy Land in the year 1118, ostensibly to protect Christian pilgrims. Once in Jerusalem, they were housed at Al-Aqsa Mosque, ground zero for the Freemasons. Al-Aqsa was built directly on top of the ruins of the Jewish temples that preceded it, including, according to tradition, the central icon in all of Freemasonry, the Temple of Solomon. It was known in medieval times that the Templars housed their horses in underneath the southeastern platform in the area called Solomon's Stables. So the Templars were involved in cleaning out this area and that was an extensive job. On this much historians agree, but since the Middle Ages, rumors and legends have held that the Templars chose their dirty stables to dig for buried treasure. Solomon's gold, the plunder of ancient Rome, the Holy Grail. From the table stage of the mushroom, the mushroom continues to upturn the cap and the, the cap becomes somewhat of a cup or a chalice. And uh, as you can see here, it's actually holding uh, the, the morning dew that it's, that it's collected. What's important to note here is the red color of the mushroom. The mushroom is a bright red mushroom. But as it turns up into this cup phase or the, the goblet phase, the, the dew of the morning dew begins to collect inside the cup. So the red pigment or the psychedelic pigment gets pulled up into the liquid. So you literally could take this mushroom and drink from the holy grail. Here's another slide depicting the mushroom in its holy grail phase, uh, fading the color, turning it into a golden, golden cup, just dripping with its psychedelic liquid. 
they lived on charity, they had no income, and they just worked night and day digging. They found their documents over those nine years, um, and their treasures, and within months they were fabulously rich. Treasure hunters or not, the Templars returned to Europe in 1127, and quickly gained the sponsorship of the church. Their group soon expanded in number to include 1,200 knights and more than 20,000 retainers. They diversified their services, inventing early forms of banking, shipping, and security. Within a generation, they were a powerful international force. The Knights Templar were really the first multinational banking concern and multinational corporation of sorts. Strangely, the Templar rules stipulated that their meetings could take place only at night. Perhaps similar to a board meeting today, you know, the outsiders were not allowed, so that opened up questions about what was really happening. And within just a handful of years, rumors were spreading that they were conducting strange rituals, which were apparently not Christian. These rituals, argues Christopher Knight, must have come to the Templars from the scrolls they discovered under the temple. Rituals that served as the basis for the rebirth of an ancient religious practice that bonded the Templars together in strength and in secrecy, a bond soon to be shared with the Freemasons. The Templars embarked on a massive building program, employing freestone masons to build the great cathedrals at Chartres, Notre Dame, and many others across Europe. Templar families had to bring in stonemasons and turn these people into perhaps like something like lower level Templars. They had to give them a ritual, uh, so they were bound to secrecy also. Christopher Knight believes the Templars' powerful rituals live on in the Freemason rituals of today, but that the meaning has been lost. There is one very good reason why Freemasonry created this aura of secrecy. That is because of the rituals they conduct. They don't know why they conduct them. So if you're open with somebody and say, well, yes, I went to this ritual and I had one trouser leg rolled up and I had my, my, my chest out of here and I was blindfolded and a noose around my neck and a knife to my chest and, oh, right, yeah, that's pretty weird. Why did you do that? Well, I don't know. Well, you're going to sound a fool. So you pretend it's secret.